So you're thinking about buying a home in Seattle, Washington, and one of the questions that you may have is, should I buy a brand new construction home or should I maybe save a little bit of money and go with an older resale home that might need a little bit of work? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna be discussing in today's video. I'm gonna go over the pros and the cons of each of those two options to hopefully make your decision a little bit easier on which way you should go. So if that sounds like something that you'd like to learn more about, stick around because we're getting after it right now. Okay, got a super informative video for you today, so let's jump right in and get going right away here. So we're gonna start by talking about new construction, pros and cons. After that, we'll talk about the resale side of things and the pros and cons of that. But in new construction, you know, the biggest allure or the biggest draw that people have to new construction is that everything is brand new. You know, everything is shiny. You have brand new floors, you have brand new countertops, the cabinetry, new paint on the walls, the landscaping is looking beautiful and pristine. Everything's just the way you like it. And what comes along with all of that newness is the lack of maintenance that needs to be done. Now, yes, there's still going to be maintenance with every home as you live in it and those yearly things that you need to do but as far as like the big things like your HVAC system water tanks stuff like that you're not gonna have to worry about those for several several years in a new construction home so that's probably the biggest thing that people love and why they look for a new construction home Another pro of buying new construction is the warranty that is provided by the builder at closing. So typically most builders will offer what is referred to and you'll hear it called a 210 warranty. And what that means, I'll go over it, I'll kind of explain it in detail, is the first, the first 12 months of owning the home, the builder is going to cover anything that happens, any kind of deficiencies outside of like your normal wear and tear. So if something happens, a crack in the drywall, appliances, something like that, builder is gonna cover it for the first 12 months. Now, what I highly recommend is, you know, before you buy and before you close on this new construction home, you're always gonna wanna get an inspection. But what most people forget to do if they're not reminded by a good real estate agent is that at that 11 month mark, you need to set a reminder to have another inspection done and have an inspector come in, find out if there's anything happening down in the crawl space, up in the attic, something that's not you know readily available and seen by a homeowner and just make sure that everything's in tip top shape because if it's not, the builder's gonna cover it and you're still under warranty. So make sure you set that reminder if you do go the new construction route at the 11 month mark. Now, the 10 year part of that warranty is a structural warranty. So if something were to happen to you know compromise the structural integrity of that home, the builder is gonna be on the hook for it, they're gonna cover it, and that is the 10 part of a 210 warranty. So uh, provides a lot of peace of mind for buyers and definitely uh, what's great about owning new construction. And um, you know, not all of them are gonna offer a 210 warranty. Most of them will, I would say 99% of builders offer you know, a 210 or a 26, some, some sort of warranty like that. Um, recently, we actually just ran into a situation, um, helped a buyer uh, up in uh, Marysville buy a brand new construction home. And you know, before we went under contract, we found out that they do not offer a 10 year a structural warranty or even a six year warranty. Uh, but what we were able to do is negotiate that into the sale price. We got a credit from the builder so that we could buy an you know, uh, outside of what the builder offers, additional warranty protection for that uh, structural part of the home. So um, that worked out, but most of the time you're gonna have that provided by the builder. Another big pro that today's buyer loves about new construction homes is the modern amenities and the features that you get with buying a brand new home. Now, in the Seattle area, we don't see a lot of like master planned communities that offer these amenities such as, you know, giant pools or clubhouses like you see in other parts of the country. You don't see a whole lot of that here in the Seattle area. But what you will see is really nice park setups, you'll see green spaces, uh, just big open areas that's great for kids and family to get out, play, 
you know, maybe if you don't have a huge backyard. So having those updated amenities within a neighborhood is a real bonus and a benefit for, you know, the new construction side of things. And another, another thing that people love about it is the updated features that the home itself is going to have. Typically, you're going to have the type of floor plan that today's buyer is looking for. Most people want an open floor plan with the kitchen just off of the living area. So it's great for entertaining. Uh, maybe you're looking for a home with multi-generational living options. You know, we're starting to see a lot more of that offered by these new construction builders. And you know, just a lot of the times it just comes down to the small stuff like uh, your primary bathroom, having that be a decent size and the closets in your primary bedroom being nice and large walk-in closets because you know, some of that stuff in a resale older home is gonna be on the smaller side or not have the exact type of floor plan or layout that you're looking for. And trying to make those changes on a home that's already been built sometimes is doable, but other times it's just not feasible and you just cannot do something like that. So having that brand new home is going to ensure that you have the floor plan that you want, the layout that you're looking for, and you'll be happy all the way around. Another big pro about buying new construction is the builder and lender credits that potentially could be offered if you buy that home. Now, it's not uncommon to see a builder offer 10, 20, 30, $40,000 in credits to buy their home. And you, the home buyer, you can use that money to, uh, sometimes you can use it to upgrade the home. Sometimes you can use it to buy down your interest rate or just pay all of your closing costs so you have more cash in pocket at closing. You know, there's a lot of different ways you can use that credit from the builder, but sometimes in, combination with that builder credit, you will receive a lender credit if you use that builder's lender. And uh, you can use that lender credit to help buy that interest rate down more, pay some of those lender closing costs to keep more cash in your pocket. So, you know, it, it's pretty competitive up here amongst these new construction builders. They want to make their product as sweet as possible for you, the buyer, and they want you to choose theirs. So they're offering these major, major incentives to do so. And you are going to benefit from that with going the new construction route. All right. Another big pro about buying new construction is typically there's going to be less competition amongst buyers for new construction. Usually when a builder puts their home on the market, they will look at offers on a first come first serve basis, which means if you're the first one to get your offer in and it's competitive terms, uh, price that the builder's looking for, then usually you're gonna win that home and it's gonna be yours. That's not always the case when you're talking about the resale side of things. And we'll talk a little more about that when we're discussing the cons of the resale home. But for new construction, typically first one in, get it's the deal. Not always the case. Sometimes there is competition. We actually just ran into that a couple weeks ago. I'll tell you a short story about how we dealt with that. And we, we, we found a new construction home that we wanted to make an offer on. We found out that another family had just put an offer in on it and it was going to be a multiple offer situation. Now, if we would have submitted that same offer as the other family, the builder, what they would have done is they would have sent the offers back and said, Hey, come back with us uh, with your highest and best offer that you are comfortable with. That's usually the case. Wanting to avoid that, I had the conversation with the buyer and we talked about maybe altering the terms a little bit. In this scenario, the builder was offering a $10,000 builder credit to the buyer of the home. And knowing that the other offer probably asked for that $10,000 credit, we made a slight adjustment. We said, instead of $10,000, let's only ask for $8,000. And maybe that'll be enough for them to choose our offer and avoid any kind of counter offer situation where we're spending five, 10, $15,000 more for the property. Well, we submitted it that way and lo and behold, it worked. We won the deal got the offer for only $2,000 less on that credit, which saved the buyer a ton of money and they were ecstatic. Now, 
And that's just one example of why it's a great idea to give us a call. You know, if you're buying a home, whether it's new construction or resale, you know, we're happy to help you out. Give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email. Contact information is popping up on the screen right here. We're happy to help you make that smooth move right here to Seattle. And you know what? We could probably save you some money in doing so. All right, another pro about buying new construction is that the builder is typically going to fix any items that pop up on that inspection report when presented to them. Now, that's not always the case with a resale home when you're dealing with a seller that has been living in the home and trying to move on to their next one. Sometimes it can be a little more complicated on the resale side. But on the new construction side, typically a builder is going to fix most everything that pops up on that report. But this is just a good example and reason why you should have an inspection done on a new construction home before you buy it. Sometimes if you go directly to a builder without representation from a real estate agent on your side, they may try to talk you into just closing on the home without doing the inspection because, you know, oh, it's a brand new home. Why would you need that? Well, you absolutely do need that and I'll tell you why. We had a situation about a year ago, helped the client buy a new construction home we had the pre-inspection done before closing and found out that there was a bunch of organic growth, some mold going on up in the attic. Now, had we not done the inspection, we would have never known about it until probably years down the line when it was already too late, the warranty had expired, and that could have been a really, really big issue for that buyer. But we caught it before closing, builder fixed it, there was just some ventilation is issues when they put the insulation in they covered up the the, um, the the holes up there in the attic to help the the ventilation and uh everything was fixed though everything was fine and the builder took care of it but you know just a, like i said another good reason why you need to have an inspection but typically the builder is not going to have an issue with fixing any of those items that are on that inspection report Okay, enough about all the good about new construction. There's got to be some bad, right? <laughs> well, the first con that we're going to talk about with new construction, and this is, this is pretty much what you're going to run into for the most part, unless you're up in like the luxury range of homes, the $1.5 million plus dollar homes, uh, you're usually going to have a smaller yard for, for you know, your house. Uh, for, for homes that are newly built, it's not uncommon to see a home with a 3,500 square foot lot. Um, you know, you'll probably have a fence in your, you know, backyard and you're just not gonna have much room. But, you know, for some people that's not an issue. You know, if you're not into yard work or you don't need that space and you're, you're fine, you just want a low maintenance house, that's probably not gonna be an issue for you. But if you are wanting more space for kids or maybe a dog to run around in the backyard, that's gonna to be tough to find in a new construction house just because the lots are smaller. And you know, usually with homes that are, you know, 2000, you know, built in the year 2000 or later, that's kind of when you started to see these lot sizes started to shrink. You know, builders were cramming more homes into these developments and wanting to, you know, maximize their investment. And in return, it just made a smaller lot size for the home buyer so that's what you're going to run into um, for the most part like i said unless you're up in that luxury uh price point then you know the, the lot sizes start to get a little bit bigger but you know don't let that surprise you but you know new construction smaller yard Okay, another con about buying new construction is a small con, but you definitely should still know about it, is that anytime you buy a new home, and really this, is, this applies to any home that you buy that's less than 15 years old, is you're probably going to have a sewer capacity charge that is attached to that home. Now, what that means and what that is, is that when that new home was built and connected to the sewer system, King County charges a fee to connect to the system. And what that fee goes towards is, you know, for, for wastewater infrastructure to kind of be kept up to date and make sure that everything is operational and good to go. And basically what this fee 
equals out to to you is going to be a, a quarterly bill that's uh, $75 per month that's issued on a quarterly basis. And if you were to pay it over 15 years, that's how long it spreads out. 15 years, it's gonna be $13,000, $14,000. If you pay it off early, you definitely get some early payoff discounts. But something you need to be aware of if you're buying a new construction home, or like I said, any home that's under 15 years, typically a buyer assumes that sewer capacity charge. So like I said, it's not a huge deal, it's $75 per month, but hey, $75 is $75 and something that you should know about. All right, another con of new construction, and this one is kind of a big one, you know, for a lot of people. And this is, you know, for a lot of new construction communities that you see, you know, depending on the price point, but a lot of them are going to kind of have those kind of cookie cutter looking homes that, you know, you're not really seeing a lot of differentiation amongst your neighbors, you know, like maybe every fifth house is going to be like the exact same house as yours. And sometimes that can, you know, really kind of be a turnoff for some people when looking for that kind of home. You know, you're not gonna see a whole lot of uh, individual character for those homes in a new construction community. So, um, you know, if you're looking for something that is unique and you're not looking like all of your neighbors, then new construction might not be for you. But if you don't mind that, you will probably be okay. Another con of buying new construction, and this might eliminate new construction from being an option for you altogether, is that the timetable for when you can close on that home might not line up with what works for you. And let me explain. Now, typically with new construction homes, Sometimes you will find homes that are, you know, ready to go. They are complete, they're finished. And once you get your offer accepted, it's ready to close in 30 to 45 days. But that's not the, the, the most common way new construction is handled here. For the most part, you know, it, it's not uncommon to see uh, a home that's three, four, uh, maybe even six to 12 months away from completion before you can buy that home or close on that home. So sometimes, you know, if you're looking for something to close on a little bit quicker, like in a 30 to 45 day time frame, then you're going to be very limited on what homes are available in that new construction um, option. And, you know, you're going to have definitely more options on the resale side. So, you know, it really just depends on how flexible you are with your timetable. But just keep in mind, you know, most of the new construction options that are out there aren't going to be ready to close on right away. You're going to have some sort of wait. And like I said, that could be six, 12 months sometimes. So be aware of that. And if you're flexible, great. If not, maybe we should look at resale homes. Okay, another con of new construction. And for some people, it might not be that big of a con, but if you're looking to be closer to the core, like downtown area of Seattle or Bellevue, Redmond, Kirkland, those areas like that, then it's gonna be tougher to find new construction closer to the core. So most of these new construction communities are a little bit further out in the suburbs, like Bothell, you'll find a ton of new construction, but cities like Seattle, cities like Bellevue, Kirkland, you're not gonna see a ton of new construction just because you know they've already kind of reached their capacity. You will see some older homes that have been torn down and a new con newly constructed home that has been put there in its place. But for the most part, you're not gonna see these large new construction communities right close to town. So if you're looking for somewhere that is really, really close commute, really close to the core, then that's gonna to be tough on the new construction side of things and going the resale route might be a better option for you. But you know, un unless you can find those kind of one-off new construction builds within, you know, kind of closer to the city core, but that's rare, tougher to find, and just something that you need to know about as a con of new construction.
Okay, another pretty big con of buying new construction is that typically you're gonna pay a little bit more for it. Now, it's not always the case and it's kind of hard to put an apples to apples comparison from new home to an older resale home, but for the most part, you're gonna be paying a little bit more for a similar sized home that is brand newly constructed. So uh, just know that, you know, and it, it makes sense. I mean, everything in your home is brand new and you're gonna pay more for it. So, you know, if, if you're more budget conscious and looking for something on that lower end, then, you know, really depending on what area we're looking in, more than likely resale is going to be a little bit more affordable for you. But just know if you want that shiny new house, you're gonna have to write a little bit of a bigger check for it. All right, another con of buying new construction that, you know, some people don't realize this until we have this conversation with them and we're getting out looking at new houses is, you know, new construction homes typically do not come with a refrigerator. Usually they do not come with any window coverings and they most likely won't come with a washer or a dryer. And you know, that's very, very typical for new construction. Now, sometimes you will find a model home that's being sold and it has all of those in it, or you can use maybe the upgrade money, the uh, builder credit that they're offering to buy those and have those installed before closing. But just keep in mind, those are not going to be available for you, I would say in 95% of the cases. So, you know, you're gonna have to budget for a new refrigerator, which on the low end is probably $2,500 at least. Uh, for window coverings, you're probably gonna be, again, on the low end, probably 2,500, which can go all the way up to, you know, multiple thousands, 10,000 plus, you know, depending on the windows and the quality of window coverings that you get. Uh, but then, you know, washer and dryer, you know, you're probably another $3,500 or so for those sets. So something to keep in mind, you know, it's going to be a little bit of extra cash out of your pocket, but you know, uh, to help offset that a lot of the times the builder does offer those credits. So that does help a lot, but definitely something that you need to be aware of and mindful of when buying the new construction home. Sometimes that stuff is not included. All right, another con of new construction, and even though this could be a temporary con, still a con nonetheless, and you need to know about it. Uh, but that is, you know, if you are one of the earlier residents in a new construction community, more than likely you're gonna be living in an active construction zone for anywhere from several months to a year plus, depending on how big that community is and how far along they are when you buy your home. But you know, if you are one of the early, you know, first few homes that have sold in that community, just know you're going to be living with a lot of noise, a lot of construction going on, and they typically have set hours. You know, they don't get started before nine o'clock and they're usually done by five o'clock, maybe a little bit tiny later than that. But you know, it's something to be aware of, something to know about. It's gonna be noisy because, you know, they have to build all your neighbor's homes, of course. But, um, you know, it, it, it's a temporary thing, but definitely be aware of it because if you are sensitive to noises or just need that peace and quiet, then uh, it's definitely something that we're going to have to take into consideration when shopping for your next home. Okay, this next one could fall in either the pro category or the con category for you, depending on your situation and what you're looking for in your next home. And that is the presence of an HOA or a homeowners association in the community. Most new construction communities will have an HOA in place. And typically what comes along with that are your CCNRs or your you know, rules and regulations of what you can and can't do with that property. And like I said, that can be a pro or it can be a con. The good things about an HOA are that you Typically you're in a community that's being, you know, upkept. Uh, people are taking care of their homes. They're mowing their lawns. They're not painting their house a crazy color. They don't have broken down cars or boats parked in front of their driveway or on the street. You know, the HOA is not gonna allow that stuff. That's a pro. 
But if you are looking for a community or a home that you have no restrictions, you know, maybe you have an RV that you wanna park in your yard, a boat, or, you know, maybe you just want less of, uh, you know, the, the, the people looking over what you can and can't do, then, you know, having that, that HOA is going to be a con for you. So just depending on what you're looking for and what you wanna use, um, what, what you're doing at your house, then, you know, it, that's really going to depend. So I can't really put it in the pro or the con category, but know that newer home communities are probably going to have an HOA with CCNRs in place that restrict what you can and can't do. So be aware of that. Hey guys, real quick, you know, I'm, I'm spending hours and hours hustling for you every week here making these videos and I love it, but you know what? It's a lot of hard work and you know, I ask one favor from you, you know, if you're getting any kind of value from this video, do me a favor, take half a second, hit that thumbs up button right down below helps let me know that I'm on the right track, bringing you guys the content that you're looking for, and definitely helps out the, the old YouTube algorithm and helps get this pushed out to other people that might be looking to move to the area. And you know, hey, if you wanna go one step further, hit that subscribe button. We're dropping new videos every week about what it's like to live, work, play right here in Seattle and surrounding areas. And you know, we have new videos coming out every week that cover those topics exactly. So hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and let's get back to the video. Okay, let's jump into talking about resale homes. You know, we just covered pros and cons of new construction, but, um, you know, resale, it's a different beast. You know, when we're talking about that, you know, usually we're talking anywhere from a couple years old to homes that are a hundred years old and everywhere in between. So when, when I say resale, that's what we're talking about. It just means another Another family, another homeowner has lived in that home and you're not the first one to live there. So, you know, the first pro that I love about a resale home is that typically your home's gonna have a little bit more character. You know, it's not gonna be those cookie cutter homes that we were kind of talking about in the cons of new construction. You're, you're, you're more than likely gonna see homes that uh, just have more character. You know, you're not looking like every other home in your neighborhood. You know, it might be a one-story home, maybe you have a two-story home, a split-entry home, but, you know, it probably looks different than your neighbors. You know, that's not always the case. You know, sometimes there are some cookie-cutter-looking, older, more established neighborhoods, but, you know, if you're looking for some more character, you're probably going to be able to find it with a resale home. Okay, another big pro that sometimes this is the deciding factor that make people move towards going towards an older resale home is you're probably going to have a larger yard in your house with a home that's built, you know, pre 2000s, more than likely your lot size is going to be 7,000 plus square feet. You're going to have some backyard, you're going to have some room to stretch out, kids to play, dog to run around. And you know, you, you, it's not uncommon to find that in an older home. Now, what comes along with all of that space and more mature yard is, you know, the landscaping is going to be more mature you know you're gonna see larger trees in a neighborhood that was built in the 60s or 70s you're gonna see huge trees which you know in the Seattle area it's not uncommon you know in those older established neighborhoods it's hard to get away from trees and if you're if you like that sort of thing you love the you know the look of a tree and the shade it provides and you know there's a lot of big trees around here but you know you just don't get that in new construction communities because typically when these new construction communities start they scrape everything off and they start with just a, a piece of dirt with with nothing else in it and your trees are going to be just as old as the house the the bushes around it the landscaping everything is starting fresh so if you are looking for something with more established, more mature landscaping, you're gonna have a hard time finding that in new construction. But in resale, it's, it's, it's plentiful around here. Large trees, it's beautiful. It's, it's such a, it's a beautiful part of the world to live in around here, but uh, you, you do kind of miss out on that a little bit with the new construction, but you get it with the resale stuff. All right, another big pro about buying a resale home is if you're looking for a home that is closer to the core of the city, you know, closer to Seattle, closer to Bellevue, Kirkland, Redmond, those areas, then 
you're going to have an easier time finding a home that's already been there for a while, a resale home. You know, like I was talking about in the new construction, the cons of that is you're probably going to be a little bit further out from the core. But if you're okay with the resale home, it's really easy to find those that are in the core of the city. So, you know, that's a major benefit because you're going to be traveling less. Your commute times are going to be a lot more manageable. And if that's important to you, then you're probably going to have an easier time finding that with a resale home. Okay, this pro is a big one and probably a, a major reason why a lot of people do go with resale homes and that's just because they're they're more readily available, right? There's there's more resale homes on the market at any given time typically than you're going to find with new construction. And, you know, that's just supply and demand basic principles. So, you know, with that, you know, more than likely the the timetable might also line up a little bit easier for you. Like, remember when we were talking about new construction, you know, sometimes you're going to have a, a long delay before you can move into that home. But with the resale market, typically when someone puts their home on the market to sell, they're wanting to move out of it within 30 to 45 days after accepting an offer. So if that's what your timeline looks like and your timetable is that shorter period of time, then a resale is going to be probably... Um, more plentiful, of course, but you know maybe a better option for you if you do need that quicker close ready to move in. Uh, going the resale route is probably the way to go. All right, probably the biggest pro of buying a resale home is gonna be that you're gonna more than likely be able to get that home at a lower cost than what you would have to pay for the same home that's newly constructed. Yes, you might have to put some money into it. You might have to do a little bit of extra work, but you know, if you are budget conscious and you know, have a price range in mind and you want to be in a certain area that you can afford, then, you know, maybe going that resale route might be a better option for you if those other things are not lining up for you on the new construction side. So, you know, Typically, not always, but typically you can get into these resale homes for a little bit less money than you could in the brand new construction homes. Okay, one of the bigger cons of buying a resale home is the potential that that home is going to need either a little bit of work or sometimes a lot of work. And just really, it's a case by case basis, depends on the home, of course. But, you know, if you do need to do some work, sometimes you can actually move into the house and do these projects and get them done kind of, you know, as you go, they're not really time sensitive. But, you know, in other cases, there might be some other projects like, you know, maybe you need some new flooring, maybe you need to paint and put new cabinets in or countertops in the kitchen and you know those are certain kind of projects that we can actually help you out with get those projects completed as quickly as possible after closing by getting these estimates done before we even close a lot of the times once you get a home under contract we can get contractors in the home giving us estimates taking measurements lining up dates to start the construction process or the remodel process and get that going as soon as possible so you're not having to wait several months after closing on that home to actually move in and we can help you out with that and you know just another really good reason on why it's a good idea to give us a call you know shoot us a text send us an email contact information is popping up on the screen right below here you know we're happy to help set that up and coordinate and game plan get you into that home as soon as possible because you know what more than likely a lot of that stuff is just gonna be cosmetic fixes and upgrades that you need to make and can usually be done pretty quickly within the matter of a couple weeks. And, you know, we have the resources and the people that we can refer you out to, to help get that done in a quick manner and done at, you know, with really high quality. So give us a call. We'd love to help you out. Okay, another potential con about buying a resale home is, you know, chances are it's not going to have an HOA. And that might not be a con for you. Maybe that's a pro, that's what you're looking for. But sometimes in neighborhoods that do not have these HOAs, they can tend to look pretty run down you know, very quickly. And you know, the last thing that you wanna do is buy a home, 
put money into it and fix it up, make it look beautiful, while the other homes around you are just in a rapid decline and your values are getting dragged down along with theirs. So, you know, that's, that's usually uh, kind of a worst case scenario. You don't see that all the time, but you can see that in neighborhoods that do not have HOAs established. But, you know, again, that might be a pro for you. Or it might be a con. So it just depends on what side of the coin that you fall on. But if you're, if you're wanting your neighbors taking care of their lawns, houses, and keeping streets clear, stuff like that, then not having an HOA could be a potential con for you. Okay, another con of buying a resale home is that, you know, potentially there's not much of a track record of ownership or, you know, you're not really sure what's going on with the house when you buy it. Now, the older the home is, the more difficult it is to have any kind of track record and know what's going on. And, you know, that's why we have inspections done. We want to make sure that everything is, you know, up to, you know, code and not any kind of, you know, hazard or anything like that. But, you know, just knowing about the house, the little nuances of how a home lives and, you know, just small little things like that. Sometimes just having no track record of it can be a con for some people. And whereas in a new home, you know everything because you're the only one that's lived there. You, you know, there's, there's no questions asked. You're asking yourself, but you know, just not the same and cannot be said for a resale home. Now, like I said, the older it is, the tougher it is to get to track. But, um, you know, that's, that's why so many of these older resale homes just have so much character because they've been lived in by different families and different owners and they've put their own personal touches on them. And, you know, that can be a good thing, but, you know, it can also be a bad thing if you really want to find out about certain things. You're just, you know, there's a chance that you might not be able to just because it was, you know, five or six owners ago and who the heck they were, we don't know. So keep that in mind with the resale property, you just might not have a very good track record on it. Okay, one of the bigger cons about buying a resale home is the potential that some of the items in that home are going to need to be updated or upgraded and that can cost a lot of money. So by certain items you know the stuff i'm talking about could be windows it could be siding it could be roofing or maybe the hvac system or a hot water tank or you know any number of you know kind of these big ticket items that are you know general maintenance on a home but can cost a lot of money you know it's not uncommon to drop 10 or twelve thousand dollars on a roof depending on how big it is it can definitely get more than that uh, if you need to do windows you know maybe the the home you're buying has some aluminum framed windows that aren't the most efficient and you know you're, you have a tough time getting that cozy feel in a home when you have those old aluminum framed windows so you want to put some new vinyl windows in well that is going to be a lot of money that could cost you 20 30 thousand dollars or more to have a project like that completed and siding you know siding is another expensive one you know right around that same price point is what it would cost to put windows in you know depending on the size of these homes so not cheap you know you can you can usually get the home for a little bit cheaper but that might also mean that you're going to have a pretty big bill coming up on replacing or upgrading, updating some of these items. So something to be mindful of and something that I think that we do a really good job of when we walk through a home, letting you know what the home is going to cost you, you know, not just to purchase that home, but what it's going to cost, you know, year one, year two, year five, year 10, you know, what you're going to, uh, what you're anticipated repair costs are gonna be. So I think that's really where we uh, stand out and that's just making sure that you're informed on what's going on. So not anything I would be scared of, but just make sure that you have it in the budget to replace those items when uh, the time comes. Okay, probably my biggest con for resale homes, and it depends on what kind of market we're in, but you know, in, in the market that we've been in in the last several years, you know, it's, it's varied in its competitiveness amongst buyers, but it's 
Not uncommon to see an offer deadline placed on a home when it goes on the market as a resale home goes. And what that means is typically uh, a home, when it comes on the market, it will have a review date that's set. And typically that review date is anywhere from five days after it goes on the market to 10 days or so, you know, but usually kind of in that week time frame to give everybody a chance to see the home. And then they set a date that that is when offers are due. And it can get competitive, you know, for a home buyer to compete with a multiple offer situation, it usually means a couple different things, you know, it usually means either paying more money for the home or making your terms more competitive of that offer. And you know, that's stuff that we can talk about uh, at a different time, but um, just know that sometimes it can be more competitive in a resale situation that you're not really typically dealing with on the new construction side of things. So buying resale is completely different in that regard sometimes. Um, and just, just something that you, you need to be aware of and, you know, be, be uh, mindful of when that time comes to make that offer on a resale home with an offer review date. Okay, another big con of buying a resale home that sometimes can be fixed and other times it's just so cost prohibitive that it cannot be fixed is maybe it just has a dated floor plan. So, you know, today's, today's buyer with newer homes, usually you want open concept, open living rooms to the kitchen, not a lot of walls, and that's just usually what today's buyer wants to see. Well, in these resale homes, especially the older that you get, you know, when you see homes in the 40s, 50s, you know, 60s, a lot of the times there are a lot of walls in those homes and they're, they kind of feel closed off and boxy. And, you know, with certain situations, it's easy to take a wall out and open up a floor plan and make it feel like it's, you know, a, a lot more modern layout. But other times, you know, that may be a load bearing wall and it's just too cost prohibitive to have that wall taken out. So you got to kind of just live with the fact that you have this home that is not really Really today's modern floor plan so something you have to be careful with something that we can help you out with you know we, we we spend a lot of time looking at these certain situations and giving you the best advice possible of whether or not a wall can be removed and bringing in contractors and you know seeing how feasible a project like that is and you know it's just uh, like I said a good reason to reach out to us you know if you're planning on making a move here to the Seattle area and you know whether you're buying new construction or a resale home give us a call shoot us a text send us an email we're happy to help you make that smooth move right here to Seattle and if you want to learn even more about what it's like to live here in Seattle live play work just hang out click on this playlist that's popping up right here. A bunch of videos. These are probably the best videos that are out there. They'll show you exactly what it's like to live right here in Seattle and just kind of give you a bird's eye view of uh, how we do it here in Seattle. So until next time, we'll see you around. Take care. Bye.